So today we're going to continue on with our discussion and explanation with the last of what we call the memea. So you remember again, just to review quickly, the memea are those kinds of words which describe uh, things that can be interpreted as being a verbiage or verb usage and a nominal or a noun usage for things that are things that come in nouns. And last time we looked at what we call hamani. That's a VT, a transitive usage of a verb. A VI, which is a hehele usage of a so-called action verb. And then we have our two hopena. And we have the aano, which are words that describe a conditional state of being. And then we also talked about the EI, which if you remember, are words that have been transformed into what in English we call a passive form. So its original form would be an action, like to eat, I eat. And then to become eaten, or something that has been eaten, or an ear, to transform what was once a VT into a, what we call a hopena. So today we're actually going to look at the final piece of the memea, which is really the other half. So we kind of think of a memea, and we kind of think of there's a particular line. Oh, sorry, let me just uh, change this off here. That there's really a line that is drawn between, in many ways, these two sets of words. What we generally have at the top are what you call in English verbs, or in Hawaii we call painu. That means that the word is being used in a, in a verb-like usage. And then we also have, um, just click off my, my, uh, in here, the final, we have what's called kikino. Now kikino, is a nominal usage. So you realize the word kikino, you have the word kino here. And of course, we recognize the word kino as being something that has a body, some kind of form, a thing. So anything, something that's a thing, you know, we call a kikino, you know, a body. And generally, in dictionaries, of course, you notice that those things are um, written down or described as being a, in fact, a, a noun. Consistent. Plus, this is what we call a kikino. And a kikino has a noun or nominal usage. Okay. Now, the first thing to remember, anytime you have a kikino, a simple kind of rule to remember is that when you have a kikino, for example, like wahine, and wahine would be a woman, yeah, a thing, a woman, we always generally remember that every time we have a kikino, the way we can tell it's a kikino is that a kikino will, for the most part, 99% of the time, as you'll find, will have what we call a kai. And the word kai means to lead. Yeah, so it's a word that leads the so-called noun. Yeah, so the more common kai, yeah, we can think of words like ka, ke, a specific kai like keia, kena, kela, possessive kai like kau, ko, kana, kolako, so those are all kai. These are all words, sometimes called articles or determiners in English, which basically mark anything that's a kikino or common now. So let's go look and uh, do some uh, quick exercises. Uh, so first of all, if I took any kind of memea word, let's go use that same word, wahine. So a word like wahine, you would notice in the uh, so-called Dictionary is a word that is a both a noun, it has a nominal usage, and it also has a verb usage. And in fact, it has a specific kind of verb usage, which would be a verb stated. So when you see the dictionary and you see NVS, for example, or NVT or NVI, it's telling you that it's a word that actually has two usages. So we think about this word having two usages. The first, as we already saw, the word wahine as an aano would be something to the effect of to be woman-like, like a woman, feminine perhaps, womanish, in a state of condition of being a woman, as a description perhaps. Okay. But we can also use wahine in a usage that what we call a kikino, meaning a common noun, it's a thing. And the way we can distinguish whether the wahine means womanly or an actual woman is that the actual woman meaning, or a kikino, will always have a kai in front of it. So 
Whenever you see a word like kavahine, for example, a combination of words, kavahine, I know that I'm talking about the woman as a common noun, a thing, because kavahine starts off with a kai. Versus on this side, I might have some kind of sentence we might say, well, vahine o kimo. And you will notice in this example, vahine does not have a kai. Yeah, it does not have a kai in front of it. There's no da word, this word, my word. In fact, it's marked by a, what you would call a makapainu, a verb marker. So this is telling you that this woman here, this vahine here, is not the same as this woman here. That this woman here has a meaning of to be womanly. In other words, chemo was womanly or chemo became womanlike or chemo became effeminate perhaps, or some of that means. So whenever we see a memea, one of the ways we can distinguish on whether or not that memea is being used as a noun versus being used as a verb is to see or to hear whether or not it has a kai. So let's take a word like ola again. Ola is also an NDS. It has a noun usage, right? So for example, we know I could say keola versus just something like uola. And this one here tells me that I'm talking about ola with the meaning, for example, something like life, life as a thing, keola. Versus this one here, Ola, which doesn't have a kai, again, it doesn't have a kai. There's no da, the, this, my in front of it. And what this would, of course, would mean is to be alive or to have lived as a verb. So whenever you see a word like Ola, I mean, me'a like Ola, it doesn't necessarily mean life. It also can mean to be alive or to live. So you have one word, Ola, that has multiple uses. And to kind of remember, if it's used as a thing, and now we call this a kikino, that's a thing, versus in this usage, for example, uh, wola would be a uh, vs or a uh, an in this particular usage. And so let's look at another example. Um, I'll take another word like uh, noho, for example. Noho, again, we have multiple usage. Yeah, that's a memea, these words. I can have a nominal or noun usage as a kikino, and I could say something like ko'u noho. And I know this noho means chair. How do I know it means chair? Because again, as a thing, because I know it has a kai. Yeah. Um, versus as a verb or painu, yeah. Noho could mean the action of to sit. It could mean the action of to exist or to live somewhere. So you can see that you have one word like noho, and you have, in this example, you would have a hehele usage as an action, um, as a vi action, yeah. An action that does not have a loka, noho. But I also have the noho that can be used as a kikino, or a nominal usage, and I know it's a nominal usage because it is as is kai. So generally we have this kind of simple rule to follow, and I wouldn't call it exact rule because there are, of course, there's always exceptions, but generally we always think about if it's a kikino, if a word is being used as a kikino, it has to have a kai. Or in other words, if there is a kai, if there is a kai, it must be being used as a kikino. And this would many examples you can look at. Um, besides, uh, I can take a word like leka today. I could take a, a modern word like leka today. Yeah, letter. If I say kaleka with a kai. I know I'm talking about an actual letter, a thing, kaleka. If there is no kai, and I say something like leka, leka oi, then this leka actually can be used as a verb, actually a vt, which is to write a letter, to send a letter, leka. Yeah, so my point is to, to 
to always remember that these memeo words have the ability to be used both in a nominal sense as a kikino, which requires that they have a kai, or they may be used in a verbage sense, with verbs that have no kai, but since they be verbs, of course, or painu, they can always have maka painu also. So, and with that, yeah, again, remember the general kind of rule. Every kikino has a kai, and if there's a kai, it must be a kikino-like or nominal usage. We'll get into the next one, which are called kia. With that, mahalo nui.